Hi, and welcome to the Combine Art Collective first virtual artist reception. Uh, we have Anne Haley here who has put together a body of work, body work called Lithographia. And I wanted to start out here and look at this body of monoprints and ask her to tell us a little bit about her inspiration and the intimacy of this work. Uh, thanks, Trisha. I really appreciate being here and being able to show my work. These are paper weavings. Um, the original monotypes were inspired by the farmland, the divided slopes, the cultivated and fallow ground between here and Waitsburg. All colors, all shapes, all shades. To print them, I used what's called a rainbow roll so that I had a different, two, di two different colors on the same roll blended together. And when I wove them together, the, the blending of the rainbow rolls from two different prints gave a real shimmering effect of color. These are done by weaving across and weaving down. They take hours and hours and hours to do. But the very best time to do this kind of work is, was when my husband was watching the NFL last winter, and I had plenty of time to get an awful lot done. So I've known you almost as long as I've been at uh, Walla Walla, and uh, it's been really great to watch sort of how your artwork has expanded to this amazing body of work. But I wanted to start by asking you, when did you decide to go to art school in your life and because it has inspired me. I'd like to hear a little bit about that journey. Well, one of the questions that I thought you would ask was when did you first start making prints? And I have a print that I made in the third grade that my mother kept, so I really am returning to my roots. But all through school I was college driven and college Found. And so I really didn't do that much art, but I did a lot of knitting and a lot of quilting and a lot of macrame. And I spent, I did a degree in librarianship and ran public libraries for 30 some years. And when I finished with that, I decided to go back to school because I'd always wanted to see if art and design was a path I wanted to follow. So I started with a class at a time for community college. And then I went to Walla Walla University, and I spent four years doing that. And then I wanted more training, training that was not available here. And uh, so I kept looking around, was, was, am I looking for an MFA program, a BFA program, what am I interested in? And my husband kept saying, something will be right for me. And what turned out to be right was the Pacific Northwest College of Art in Portland because I wanted studio training. I wanted to know more about these processes. And I started with painting and photography because the printmaking classes were full. And then I, the second year, I was early in line, so I was able to register for the printmaking class, and I didn't want to. Um, although I finished a degree in painting, because that's where I started, and that's where I was grounded, I still spent most of my time in printmaking. Um, and ended up um, working through various kinds of methods of printmaking, engraving, or etching, uh, relief, uh, silk screen, lithograph, um, in layers, in all kinds of varieties of use. Um, so I really found a new path, and it's always a risk to, to move from to go from a very, very long successful career to something that is brand new and difficult. But I have to tell you, I loved art school. Even though I worked my full ass off trying to do it with 20 year olds, I loved it. Um, so one of my favorite classes was lithography. And you might ask me, what was my aha moment for lithography? And this was my aha moment. Um, and the assignment was to do a print that were layers of digital and lithograph. 
Um, it was the very last assignment of the very last winter, uh, semester. And I finished it and I went, aha, this is what I want to be doing. And it was this print that propelled me forward in wanting to create my own studio. So I bought an etching press and outfitted it with a UV exposure unit and uh, inking stations and you know all the appurtenance and equipment for a an art studio, a picnic studio. Now you want to, I'll tell you a little bit about this body of work and the inspiration from that is really between here and Wakesburg in around my husband's family farm, which is on Miller Road. And the way I would do prints is I would either remember something I had seen, a pattern, a shape of cultivated ground, or I would work with photographs and sketch from them. Um, uh, and um, each one of these is a little different. Um, the palettes are similar. Um, some are quite realistic. Others are quite abstracted. So there are all different ways of thinking about farmland and the area around here. Um, and all of these prints, the inspiration for all of them is something I have seen or have experienced. Um, and for some reason it clicks in my mind that that's an interesting design, and I'll move forward. So one of the things you said about, I didn't realize that you had really started with painting, and it explains a lot to me why a number of your prints are just very painterly. You know, other print makers have a different style, but yours are all very painterly. And I've, I've always really loved that about your work. Well, and also I spent a lot of years doing fabric and fabric art, which means if you're a poet, the corners have to be precisely together. And um, that also um, is reflected in um, the way this body of work is done, because these are all um, four and five separate plates that have to be registered so that the print is perfect when it is done. Sort of like when you're doing a quilt, mm -hmm. um, if that is the style that you want to make a quilt. That's why I would never be a good printmaker. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about uh, an artist or two or people that have inspired you over your career as an artist. I probably would start with the artist that I saw in 1962 in the Whitney Gallery in New York City. Our parents took us on a hysterical historic tour. <laughs> and it was um, George O'Keefe. And the gallery was full of Frank Stella and Mark Rothko and Lichtenstein and Bart, Barnett Newman and all of the minimalists in the pop art. And in a little corner, there were a half a dozen of George O'Keefe's mostly black clouds. And they were much smaller and they were stunning. So she has always been with me, maybe because she's a modernist. She's not a conceptualist nor a postmodernist. It's what you see is what she paints. So she has always stuck with me. Another artist that I've always enjoyed is Richard Diebenkorn from California. Um, and, and he was a painter, but he also worked in printmaking at Crown Press in um, Oakland. Um, but he approached his, what he saw, much more abstractly. And so he's inspired me more to think more abstractly about what I see and how to make that um, into a good design. Um, but he has worked from the time he was in Arizona and back in Berkeley, and then his latest work was the Green Park work that he made in Southern California, but he's always been um, an inspiration to me. And I have one other quick question, which is, I know that you work with a group of people like once a 
year or a couple times a year down at Crow's Shadow, and I'd love to hear sort of, because artists tend to be very insular and work in their own little studios, but what do you get out of having a group of people that you work with and collaborate with, I'm sure? Well, the difference between painters and printmakers is painters work in their studios alone. If you're a printmaker, you have to share some equipment, like an etching press. And so printmakers tend to work in groups because we all have to share this equipment. Uh, and I became part of this group because of a workshop from my art school, ETA, at Coach Level, and got acquainted with other printmakers who were coming to Pro Shadow on a particular weekend. And uh, we've been doing this now for five or six years. And there'll be six to nine of us. Um, and we all enjoy working next to each other. Our work is very different. There's some music going on, and we're all working away, you know, on our rollers, and working away at our presses, and running the press. And, and we just have a good time together. And we get a lot of work done. So the gift of being able to work in Pro Shadow are huge blocks of time. Um, to be able to work through an idea and be able to um, manifest it in um, a body of work. And one last, this is a very different something that I haven't seen from you, so I don't know if this is new or I just haven't seen it, but talk to us a little bit about this group and what inspired you to do this. Um, these three works were um, inspired by a summer shower on our back patio. Um, and I uh, made a, uh, a group uh, an edition as I was learning how to do this process. And I was chasing water all over the plate, you know, and it was scumming, and it was doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, and so I set that aside and thought through everything I had done and what I should do differently. But as part of that, um, I also made trial proofs. So um, these, this, this particular painting is six plates with six different colors. Um, this one is four plates with four different colors. And so part of the intrigue of the photography is to take the layers and to do different layers with different colors in different orders. Um, and um, that, that's part of the, um, the, the mystery, if you will. And if it all turns out well, you say, Man, that's great. And if it doesn't, then you start all over. So monoprint means one time. Uh, not necessarily. Monoprint means one print. One print. So the prints that you saw out in the, the hallway uh, may have gone through the press six or eight different times. Right. Um, each with a different layer of ink and a different color. But you can't do the same thing. You cannot repeat it. Again. So these, these um, this is an edition of four. This is an edition of four. This one is an edition of six. And um, these others are editions of six. Now, a fine art print studio will make an edition of 20 or 30. But I'm my own I'm my own master printer. <laughs> and so nobody's since, working next door to you. No, nobody's helping me with the sponging and the inking and all the rest of that. Yeah. And so six is about as much as I could get through in a four or five hour afternoon. So to do these, each layer, um, if if I have I'm doing an addition of six, each layer is four to five hours of work. So that's four to five hours of work times however many layers. So, um, and to do these, I did trial proofs, and that took at least a week of work. And then the addition took at least another week of work. So 
I understand now why lithographs are time consuming and also why they are expensive. Art takes time. Art takes time. And the time is money, right? That's right. Well, I just really want to thank you for being willing to put your body of work up here, for being part of the Combine Art Collective. Uh, you've been really well received here, and I just love the sense of Walla Walla and our countryside that you bring to um, our artists and our gals. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a real pleasure. Um, I enjoy being here. I enjoy having my work here. Um, and I, I hope that um, many people discover the Combine Art Collective in the online or in person and will come and enjoy everybody's work. So uh, please come. The show will be opening on Thursday. We're open Thursday. Through Sunday, 11 to 6, mass, social distancing, galleries are a perfect place for that. And we're also, uh, all of this work will be online, on the website, soon. So you can also look at it online if you're not able to get here. So again, thank you and congratulations on this